Howdy, AP Pregal. It's Ms. Kosh. I want to um, work through the multiple choice questions that Mr. Passwater posted for 314. So this is graphing polar curves. Um, you might want to go find my previous videos of how I teach how to graph um, graph these videos uh, or graph these my video of graphing polar functions. Um, so I'm just going to jump in. I didn't have any multiple choice kind of stuff, and I think um, this polar will only show up um, in the multiple choice part of the AP exam. So that being said, we're looking at this graph right here, and they're asking us which could be an expression for this. Well, so this is a rose, and if you remember before and from some of my other videos, um, if it's got an even... Um, a rose is typically written R as um, is equal to some variable usually, um, and then it's either sine or cosine of another variable times theta is usually how this plays out. So it could be something like this or A cosine B theta. So when it's, um, if B is even, it has 2B number of petals. Okay, whoop, I didn't want to make that disappear. When B is odd, it has B number of petals. So what that tells us is if I had seen, if I see a picture that has, um, let's say I can, let's pretend I can draw. It might do something like, do, 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 do. They kind of spiral out this way. Oh, I've done worse, you guys. Okay, if I saw a rose that, that's not actually as terrible as it looks. Um, if I see something with four petals, then this tells me that the B value is actually equal to two. And notice right here, when I have a point on the, um, at theta equals zero, this tells me it's going to be cosine. Um, and so then the A value just is going to be the length of that petal. Okay, so looking back to this one, I see a petal um, that's got a length here of three. So we see that it goes out to three, but all of these have an A value of three. So that's not very helpful. Um, I mean, it's interesting, but it's not helpful. Okay, so... Um, instead, we're going to need to use something else, and one of the things is that we don't have this point on our curve, okay? So if, if we did, that would tell us it was cosine instead of sine. So I can get rid of the cosine options um, because I know um, if I plug in, if I'm looking at 3 sine of 3 times 0, sine of 0 is 0, and so then that's how I know I'm here and I'm not way out here. Okay, so let's see. Now the question is, is it going to be um, the positive or the negative? Well, so let's let's try plugging in. Um, zero is not very helpful, but maybe we can try plugging in. Um, let's see, how can I get... I'm trying to figure out what would this coordinate right here be. This looks like it's at pi over 6. Um, and if um, it looks like pi over 6, I can double check that it's pi over 6 by thinking, okay... Um, I want to know sine, when does sine as big as it's going to be? So if I think about sine of 3 theta, um, my sine curve, right, goes something, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, and the largest it's going to be happens typically at pi over 2. So I want to know when is 3 theta equal to pi over 2, um, and that would be at pi over 6. So I'm going to come over here and plug in, I'm going to plug in pi over 6 into both of these and see which one happens to give me the right answer. Uh, 3 times pi over 6. Okay, so 3 times pi over 6 is pi over 2, which is going to give me 1. Um, this, so this part becomes 1, and this part becomes 1. So this becomes a positive 3, and this becomes a negative 3. Okay, but both of those had a, a theta value of pi over 6. So they were both on this right, um, this um, that ray, I guess you could say, they're on that angle. Um, but the one that's positive ends up right here, but the one that's negative would have turned around doo -doo 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 -doo, and ended up over here. So this is not the one we want, and this is a big mess of my notes, but this is how we know it's A, and that's how I would think through that problem. Okay, let's look at the next one. This is um, one of those limacons with an inner loop, um, and sometimes I end up getting these memorized and sometimes I don't. I remember that the cardioid has these two values as the same, um, like the A. If you think of it as A plus B sine theta or cosine theta, um, when A equals B, it's a cardioid. Um, I can't always spell very well, but okay, they were, I think that's right. But this is not a cardioid, and that wasn't one of the choices. <laughs> so 
that wasn't very helpful. Um, point being, I don't have all the I don't have all the little intricacies memorized because it just doesn't really serve me well. So what I might start doing is look at this and say, well, what happens if I um, on this one if this is f of zero, what would happen? So sine of zero is zero plus two is two. Okay, this does have that point right there um, at at an angle of zero. We are at a radius value of two. Okay, so let's check this one. F of zero here, um, we end up another with another two because it's four times a negative four times sine times zero is still just um, my brain stopped. It's still just two minus zero is still two. Okay, the next one. Let's look at this one. So we have not eliminated a possibility yet. If I plug in zero here, cosine of zero is one. So this is going to be six. So this one we can eliminate. Um, now, you might remember, oh, yeah, if it's sine, it opens this way and that way. If it's cosine, it opens this way and that way. If it's positive, it opens up and down or whatever. I don't always hang on to all those details, me personally. Um, and if I don't, then my guess is well, here's what to do if you don't remember all those things. Now, if you'd like to memorize that and make a nice little chart and table for yourself, don't let me stop you. Um, but so I think once we knew, once we eliminated C, I think we can also eliminate D. Um, this becomes negative 2. So at um, actually... This doesn't eliminate quite so nicely. If I'm going 0 to negative 2, it would be over here, and that is a point on my graph. So the only thing that I can eliminate just by plugging in 0 is um, uh, C. Okay, so now let's say, well, okay, well, what's going to happen if we look at F of, um, what's easy to work with? Pi over 2 is easy to work with. So sine of pi over 2 is 1 times 4 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So at pi over 2... I need to be equal to 6 way up here on this one. I'm not, so there goes that. Okay, um, the next one I have f of pi over 2 is equal to, um, so sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that's a negative 4 plus 2 is a negative 2. Okay, so pi over 4 would be, go I lied, pi over 2 would be going this way. We need to turn around and go negative 2, which is this point, so that's encouraging. Um, we've already eliminated c, but let's look at d. So f of pi over 2 is equal to cosine of pi over 2 is 0. This is just going to be 2. So that would be this point right here. That's no good. Okay, so we've eliminated three of the possibilities. So that's how I would know it's b. Now I can plug in more points. Um, for example, I might want to plug in, um, I might want to say what is f of 3 pi over 4 just to make sure I'm not totally crazy. But we've already eliminated the other three options. Um, Three sine of three pi over two is negative one times negative four is positive four plus two is six and sure enough I think that is here's the angle three pi over two and we've gone down six units super okay now let's look at this next one he's got for us a portion of the graph of the polar function r equals f of theta where f of theta equals a negative three sine theta is shown in the polar system for a is less than theta is less than b um, if zero okay so a and b a is smaller than B, well, that's obvious, um, and they live between 0 and 2 pi. Which of the following could be the values for A and B? Okay, so basically they're wanting to know um, where does this curve start um, and where does it stop? So what I might do is I might say, okay, well, what's F of, F of 0? We know to be 0. Okay, that's not very helpful. What about F of, let's find something that's relatively easy to work with. Um, Let's say sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. That's easy to work with. So this equals negative 3 halves. So at pi over 6, here's pi over 6, I have turned around and gone um, negative 1 half in this direction. That's not the part that they have graphed. So that's telling me that that's not the piece that I want. Um, so going from 0, going from an angle of 0 on over to pi is probably going to be the wrong answer. Um, so instead, I'm making a video. Give me a comeback. Um, so instead, we're going to keep looking at this. Let's see. So pi over 2, where would that put us? F of pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this is negative 3. Um, so coming up this way, we're going to turn around and come to negative 3, which is right here. Um, and then we get back to 0 by pi. So I think this is, um, we can double check and say F of pi is sine of pi, it would be zero, and that gets us back to the origin. That was a mess, but hopefully you kind of understand what I was looking at there. So I would say the answer is from pi over two to pi. Do we have other options? 
Um, the first one, 0 to power over 2. 0 to power over 2 is going to take us this way. Um, I think B is the correct answer. Um, 0 to pi is going to do the whole circle. And the power over 2 to 2 pi is going to do the whole circle also. Um, so I am confident with answer choice B. Okay. Um, on this one, this is uh, going to be a rose with three petals. Um, which of the following are values for A and B? Um, I, this is zero. Cosine starts all the way out here. And so then we want to know when does it become zero? Well, so you could th say, okay, three cosine of three theta, when does that equal zero? Well, divided by three, it's gone. Cosine of three theta is equal to zero. When does cosine equal zero at pi over two? So 3 theta would equal pi over 2, which means that theta equals pi over 6. Um, did you notice we kind of did the same thing? Where did we do that? Not there. We kind of did that same thing right here. Um, it's just a different way to think through the same idea. Um, so I think we're gonna, that's going to go from 0 to pi over 6 right here. So 3 pi, um, if we, if we want to check this one, if I plug in um, pi over 3, then that gives me cosine of pi, and cosine of pi is negative 1. So at, um, at pi over 3, which is this right here, we're going to be at negative 3. So we're going to be um, way down here. So this is going to get us pi over 6, and then we're going to curve around. Here's pi over 3. Oh, that was annoying. Okay. Um, so it's D. Okay. The figure in the graph shows that. Um, it's another rose with three petals, which is... The three here tells us we have three petals. Um, the domain is restricted to pi over three to two pi over three. Okay, well, we just said a second ago that this is pi over three. And so this is going to get us all the way up here is um, is going to be two. So this is when theta equals pi over three. And this is when theta equals two pi over three. Okay, so then what is it saying? If the domain of f is restricted to that, okay, the portion of the graph remains... Uh, the, the graph that remains consists of two pieces. One of these pieces is the portion in quadrant three from C to D. Okay, that's this little piece. Uh, which of the following describes the other piece? Well, it's this part um, up here from, uh, what is that? Is that D at the center? I've written too much. Well, I think so. Okay, so D to A is in quadrant two. And those are the ends of his notes for graphing. Um, that's the, the nice little multiple choice practice. Um, that's worth looking at and thinking about. So good luck. Study, study, study. Subscribe. Come back. Let me know how I can help you. Good luck. Go practice. It's the only way to learn this.